Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. Today's adventure is this thing right here and this thing. <laughs> we are uh, testing out the uh, sawmill track extensions that I built for the saw. We're going to try that with this super-ish long silver maple log. And before I drop it on there, I thought we'd take a look at a few kind of interesting things. So this just fell off. This was, I'm assuming, like a step for like a tree house or something. So we have all kinds of metal fasteners trying to hold that on there. And if you look down here, looks like we had some more here that look like they've been pulled out. But we will uh, we'll find out. So this is a silver maple a crotch log. It's, uh, we'll get some actual measurements in a second, but I think we're like at 32 or so down here. And it's pretty consistent all the way through down to the crotch where we got a little bit of splay as you would expect, but not a whole heck of a lot of splay, maybe uh, a little over four feet across there. So I think this should be pretty interesting. Just super duper ridiculously long slabs and hopefully with some uh, interesting crotch figure and pretty good size overall. So I'm going to set this thing on the saw and we'll see, uh, see what happens. Okay, not a whole lot to say about this guy. We're, we are right at three feet in diameter down here. Long. We got uh, a crotch thing, of course, going on down here. We got maybe a little bit of decay and action around here. So we might see a little bit of spalting as we're coming in through the top side of this side of the crotch. And then uh, that should just be wood or normal maple. That's really... Like all that's going on with this log, there's nothing going on down here. This looks to be all clear all the way through down here to the butt. So it should be just long, clear wood, and then some crotch figure up top. So I'm going to go through and make my initial cut, which will probably be somewhere uh, hereabouts. We'll get that off cut off of here. I'll take the whole log off and then we'll roll it over and put it back on the saw and start slicing it into slabs. Making that first cut, we'll make sure this thing is nice and stable. I don't have to worry about rolling around because I do have it propped up on uh, one of the side stops here. So this is trying to roll uh, this way on me. But uh, that's it. Let's fire up the saw, make some sawdust. Okay, change of plans. That uh, it's, it's not sitting on there very flat because uh, apparently I'm blind. So we're going to get the hydraulic tow board and uh, pick up the, uh, the butt end a little bit to get it leveled out.
Let's see if we got anything cool in here. Ugh. Wood's heavy. All right, who's ready for a boom? Come on, give me a boom. Was that loud enough for you? Yeah, so this has been sitting for a bit, so it is starting to color shift, which I'm liking. Reds and blues and small thing are, are starting, to, starting to show for sure. Let's, uh, let's, take, let's, let's, let's throw some water on this thing. Water boy! Water boy! He's gone. Filling a bucket with a bucket into another bucket. A wheelbarrow is just a big bucket. Bucket to bucket to bucket. I wish they had some kind of tube you could use to like put the water directly into the other bucket. Maybe some will come up with it. Oh. Look at the grain of that wheelbarrow. You got a nice, you got this color shift from like the blues to you know, grays to rusty reds. Ugh. Oh, wow. There's actually a lot of figure in this. Okay, that's a pleasant surprise. So we got all kinds of spalting in here, but we also start to get into all of this uh, curl through here too. So this is actually a really figured area right here in the tree. And as we come down, you just got some fun colors. You start getting into some reds and down here you get a little spot with some blues and blacks. And then that kind of continues the rest of the way down. So I think it's probably going to be indicative of what we're going to see the rest of this log is just going to be kind of clear but colorful at the bottom here and then more figure towards the crotch side. All right, so now I'm gonna get this thing off of here, we'll roll it over and start sawing from the other side.
All right, let's take a look and see what's going on here. Cause it looks like we got uh, a lot of fun colors and some spalting and stuff. Oh yeah. This is going to be good. Oh yeah. This has got uh, some nice color and it. it's been sitting for a little while. So it's uh, definitely stained the way I like it. Okay, starting down here on the crotch end, we have, uh, we're starting to get into some fun spalting here. You know, towards the other side of the log, we've got some fun spalt lines. Overall, though, we got some nice red colors in here as we're starting to stain a little bit. More spalting and all kinds of fun stuff through here. And the spalting continues all the way down through here into the end with uh, all kinds of fun colors and stuff. So this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a pretty darn nice log, especially as we get down here into this, uh, this crotch here. Maybe we'll have some fun crotch figure and spalting and staining and colors and stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through and make a few cuts, maybe cut four slabs or so, and we'll uh, start pulling some off and seeing what's really in there. Looks like it's about to rain. <laughs> I'm gonna cut one more. I think the next one should be kind of closer into some of the, the better stuff. And I wanna see that on this first round of cuts. I can't help myself. Right, show me the good stuff, log. Oh, now it is raining. <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's go. One more cut for now before I get rained out.
Looks like we got some rain. <laughs> I'm gonna push the saw back and tarp it real quick and we'll take a look at a few slabs. Oops. You know, if I just leave it sitting here long enough, I won't even need a bucket of water. The rain will take care of this for me. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Holy crap. <laughs> this is some pretty wild stuff. Wow. Like, look at all this down here. We have like all kinds of weird, crazy figure and topped with all kinds of fun spalt and stuff. And it's just figure and figure and figure. Dash the spalt, fun, fun color, and just crazy wild looking green. This is uh, <laughs> this is very promising. Beautiful stuff. I can't get over how crazy this is. This zone right here, the zone of craziness. See what we got going on with this one. That end looks a little bit more figured and crazy. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> some some figure there, that's for sure. Starting to get into a little bit of the figure being created by the crotch of the tree. So I think that's kind of what's going on there, but I haven't seen anything quite like that before. That's a little bit kind of weird and, and different. You got a heck of a lot of spalting here with it too. And it's kind of like clear, but colorful down through here, which is rather nice. Look how nice that is. This is actually pretty big. Like for only being the second slab, I feel like this is a pretty big piece of wood. Yeah, all kinds of fun stuff going on down here. Oh, bits of figure here and there. It's just for fun. 29. I had 29 for a, the second slab. It's pretty big. Same thing here. What's this? 29 again. So that's like 29 all the way down. What was this thing? Like 13 feet or something? Nope, 14 and a half feet. <laughs> okay. 14 and a half feet at 30 inches wide. That ain't bad for slab number two. This is a nice log. Some nice stuff in here.
Alright, slab three, what do you got for us? That's got some figure. Like, figurey bands of something or another. Yeah, we got some uh, sprinklings of crotch figure <laughs> down here in the, the crotch zone. So you can see kind of the, the striations of figure, the kind of splotchy areas. Up through here, that's all kind of some curly figure. All those little lines and things. That's all figure as well down here. So you got a lot of a lot of stuff going on down here. Something that I'm not really too sure of is we have these things here. Same thing here. You got this one here, this one here. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe over time, uh, you know, little, those steps. Treehouse steps or deer stand steps, whatever, you know, they were nailed to the tree, eventually they fell off or were removed, and then they were replaced about a decade later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. About nine years later. So every nine years <laughs> they were replaced. This one a lot longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That maybe that was one right there. Yeah, that's probably one too. So like eight to nine years and then another maybe roughly decade there. That's kind of cool. I think I think that's what that is. I think those are old nail wound areas. Anyway, <laughs> lots of lots of figure coming up through here. We get up to here and boom. That's uh that's a lot of stuff going on there. We got all kinds of weird figury things down here around the crotch and just absolutely surrounded by spalting. <laughs> this is a heck of a beautiful log. Like, dang, it's awesome. That's uh, I got uh, I got the bucket here. We got slab four. Let's take a peek at this guy. Cool. That one's a little heavy. <laughs> got away from me. Yeah, this is uh, this is big actually. God, this is a big freaking log. But now we're rocking 33 wide. Looks like pretty well the whole way. 35 down here. So, you know, fairly consistent width. And what are we like? We're what, 14 long? Something like that? Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of wood. But here's those uh, kind of wound things again. I'm thinking that's the old steps Kind of at some point. Look at the figure that that kind of wound produces. Bah! <laughs> and we got the uh, the same thing up here again with those two kind of wound things. But a lot of color, a lot of striation, a lot of things going on. And we're going to have some crotch feather in this one. We're going to have a mixture actually of bark inclusion and uh, crotch feather. So this is this is going to get even better as we get deeper into the log. <laughs> a lot of nice spalting up here too. That's a, it's a lot of crotch. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you go in because it's raining and you're like, eh, I'll get back to this tomorrow. Well, tomorrow doesn't usually happen. And in my case, it's a few weeks later, things are a little more white, <laughs> but it's actually kind of a beautiful day. It's uh, starting to warm up. The snow is kind of melting, and I'm ready to get back out here and finish uh, finish cutting this thing up. This is th these slabs are bigger than I remember. <laughs> it's quite large. All right, let's get this guy flipped over onto the stack and see what we got. Oh, <laughs> these are heavy. <laughs> I definitely have forgotten how heavy these things are. That's for sure. Oh, yep, that's that's a nope.
Oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> okay. All right, today's lesson is make sure you update your coefficient of friction parameter. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I waited to get back to this because I'm, uh, I'm surprised how crazy this thing is. So what is kind of crazy to me is like this whole side of the tree, actually over here too, there's like this uh, compression figure thing coming all the way down the tree. So it kind of looks kind of splotchy or whatever, these kind of lines here, but that's all figure all the way down. So you, <laughs> you got like these two bands of figure on the outside of the, uh, the normal wood section here. And then we got our crazy crotch thing <laughs> going on down here. So that's slab number five. I think we have six more to go on the saw. Yeah, I'm still not sure if these are like, they look like little tiny wounds or something. So these could have been where the tree steps used to be at one point. There's another one. It kind of looks like it, like it's an old wound that healed. So I don't know. I don't know. Here's what's left. Let's get the saw rolling and keep on cutting.
My remainder at the bottom there is four inches. I think that's gonna be fine. I'll leave it like that. Got a nice four inch thick piece there for something. Let's uh, start taking a look and see what we got. That's a big slab, like real big. She, it's big. This is pretty big. Remind me to get some measurements on this one. I call that one the uh, slap to the face water splash. <laughs> Let me get the, I'll get those measurements first because I'm going to forget. Okay, down here at kind of the base area, we're at 40. <laughs> the big log. 36. And then we're splaying to 51. So that's, uh, that's a lot of wood. We are in the pith, so we're at the center of the tree. That is the pith right there. This is always the most fun slab because it gives you the most time travel. So you can see how the tree, this is the oldest part of the tree, all of the original little tiny branches it had back when it was just a little sapling. You can see all these got removed and didn't become anything. All the way up, there's the center of the tree, all the little tiny branches it had along the way. All the way up. So we get to this big old crotch right here. Even this. Even to the crotch, we have all kinds of historic little branches all the way up. <laughs> Just look at this crotch with this bark inclusion and the spalt on this side. How oh, that is so beautiful. And there's some even some figure here from something else that was going on here, probably a limb or something. And because we are right smack dab here in the pith from like right around here over and same thing over this way, this is gonna be quarter sun. So this slab presents very straight grain because it is uh, quarter sun. Yeah, that's some beautiful stuff. Look at, look at all this cool stuff here. Look at the, what is that? I don't know, but it's cool. <laughs> it's a bark inclusion with some curl on, on the outside part of it. I don't know. Okay, let's uh, let's load up this one. A little less quarter sawn. A little, still, still big, <laughs> but uh, not so quarter sawn. Okay, slab seven, what do you got for us? You got some green. This is a nice log. Like, really nice. Like, look how much crazy crotch figure and bark inclusion there is. This one, however, is kind of a little more on the uh, standard wood side. We got a little bit of red stain in here and some spalting towards the outside, but otherwise, I think that weird like compression figure stuff is lessening on this side. You can kind of see it, the light catches it just right. Kind of over here, there's some striation over there, but it's less prominent than it was on the, uh, the other side of the pith on those first few slabs. I don't know though. Still pretty cool. If you like a little bit of spalting in your in your wood, you got that. <laughs> wood and spalting. These are still pretty big though. This is massive.
This is gonna be cool. <laughs> I just came up with a new water splash technique. I call this one the watering can. <laughs> ah. <laughs> This is cool. You got like this crazy remainder of crotch figure thing going on here. Love that. Now oh, check it out, we got our first nail. Right there. Eee, be a little tiny thing. All right, so, got some kind of fun. We still have a little bit of that, I don't know, that figure going on. It's a little more faint again over here. I don't think it's as prominent on this side of the log, but there is a little bit still on this side, but whatever. Once we get up here, <laughs> this is where all the cool stuff is. Look at this. You got whatever the heck all this is right here. Just this massive figure on the, the outside core of the, the crotch. Just beautiful. This is some pretty epic spalting too. Look at that. How cool is that? And with that bark inclusion there. Ugh. Oh man, this is this is great. Look at that color too. It's got a lot more reds in it. Silver maple does so much better visually when it's stained. At least in my opinion. That's just me, of course. You know, me and my opinions. Okay, that was what, slab eight? Next up is slab nine. At least it should be, if uh, numbers still work. Ah, that's good distance on that one. I think our weird figure stuff is back again. All right, quite a bit. It's like if you get the angle of the sun just right, you can maybe make out all kinds of like weird little figure lines in here. So there's some stuff going on here. And this is pretty cool too, because we're getting away from a uh, quarter song, we're getting more in a flat song. We have wider space between the lines on the outside and we're starting to see the cathedrals come back in the middle, which is, uh, it's looking super nice. This is very nice, <laughs> incredibly clear. Like there's nothing down here that's a traditional defect. It's all clear all the way up. And then this, check this monstrosity out. We got the remnants of what's left of the crotch figure and holy crap, look at all the spalting over here. Uh, this, this right here, thumbs up. <laughs> now one thing I have been uh, paying attention to since we're testing out the saw here, I've been watching the surface finish on the slabs as they come off where the wheels hop on and off the new track. And I'm not really seeing a whole lot that's like any different than the rest of the surface finish. So this is one spot right here. This is where the wheel goes over the track for the, uh, I don't know, the first time. And then the wheels are 38 inches apart. So right there. So there's kind of, there's kind of a line here, which, you know, if you look down the rest of the, the like there's a line here. Anywhere that I'm pausing as I'm cutting, you're gonna see a little bit of change in the surface finish but it's just a surface finish. It makes no difference to the actual flatness of the cut. It's not really affecting anything. And uh, all of that. I think generally these carbide blades produce a rougher surface finish, which doesn't, you know, doesn't matter at all. As long as the cut is nice and flat, which it is dead, <laughs> dead flat. If you wanna see a really rough surface finish, take a look at a board that comes off a circle sawmill. This is cool though. All of this stuff down here. <laughs> so I think we have, well, one more slab to look at. And then that last four inch thick one, we've already seen the, uh, the top side of it because that was the first cut we made.
Oh, yeah, maybe not. Maybe four inches thick is a little much. Oh. Oh. Still got it. Oh. There's some forks there. <laughs> well, once again, whatever's going on down here, I like it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a lot down here, but uh, man, it is just wicked awesome. Look at all that cool green. You know, through the rest of the log, we got our colors, our bits of spalting here and there. Nothing, nothing crazy, just beautiful colors and spalting. You can kind of see this wavy pattern in the grain as the tree grows up. I think we got uh, this one here. We'll toss that guy on there, and that's going to be about it for uh, for this one. Maybe a little sprinkle for old time's sake. <laughs> So yeah, we got the, uh, you know, colors and whatnot. Not a whole lot of crazy stuff going on out here again. We just got some wood that has some spalt here and there. And then back down here, we got, you know, a lot more spalt and whatnot. Nice and, uh, nice and chunky. <laughs> so I think this is a pretty successful test here of the, the track extension. Nice big 14 foot log. And these extension reels are actually working out really perfectly. So I feel pretty good moving forward and cutting some of the more, let's say, valuable logs <laughs> that I have. One of the things that's actually kind of nice about this setup is that I can actually walk in here now without, you know, having to step over any bunks or anything. Just have this big open space. It's kind of nice to get in here if I want to check my pressure gauge or if I want to check the cut height. I can just step right in here and it's really... No issue. I know some people were concerned about these spreading apart. Good luck with that. <laughs> Keep in mind that where this tube connects, there's a half inch of steel on this side and a half inch of steel on the other side. And that's the same on that side as well. So there is an inch of steel connecting both of those together. So they're not going to go anywhere. They can't spread apart with the carriage in here, even if they could. Because one of the design things I did on the carriage is I have it extending down past the rails to completely capture them. Uh, that way, if this carriage does derail, it can't actually fall off the track, which is uh, a nice feature that I uh, somehow thought about <laughs> back in the day. So now we can cut longer, which is uh, kind of nice without really any issue. And uh, when I'm done sawing the longer stuff that I have, I can just pop those off and set them aside and the footprint of the saw goes back to what it used to be and not quite uh, as dominating as it is now. So that's going to do it for this beautiful giant long spalted silver maple. I was surprised that there wasn't more stuff in there from all those steps but I guess someone took the time to remove all the fasteners uh, over the years somehow. Somehow that happened. So that's going to do it for this one, next time we'll get into, well, ne next time in the stalling adventures, we'll get into cutting some more of the, uh, the stuff in the pile. We got some longer logs. Specifically, we're gonna be cutting the cherry log I recovered from Cedar Rapids a year ago. That's the whole reason I needed to build those extensions was to cut that one. So we'll be cutting that one in the next sawing video, which I'm uh, looking forward to finally getting that one cut and seeing how ridiculous it is on the inside. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer your questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. It's wood.